Atlanta is the star headquarters for the Atlantis. Atlanta is the star headquarter for the Atlantis. So when we are talking about Atlanta being the main city, we are talking about a five-pointed star which represents the constellational bloodline of certain beings who fell that was in conjunction or in jurisdiction to those who are being gravitated toward Hollywood. Now, this is why you hear about five, five points. Five points is a um, train station in Atlanta. But not only is it a train station, the train station is actually, when you decode it, was a transportation system for those spiritual entities to travel from the Atlantis to the West Coast dimension of the reptilian bloodline. They knew who Whitney Houston was, for an example. They knew who she was when they drew her blood at birth. They used astrology points to find out where she had reincarnated from and found that she was very close to a star that was more than just some Hollywood star. You see, we are the real stars. They are trying to suck the soul from the true stars to process these stars to become Hollywood stars. Her daughter, Bobby Christina, was her twin in the life before she had when she came here. And they were a threat in the Atlantis realm, which controlled the dimension that we call Hollywood today. They came here as twin flames. But the thing is that their consciousness of what had happened in their life in the Atlantis with them at the time of war and the past life with these reptilians, all of that was erased. Even we come here with erased memories of our enemies because we fall from star bodies into physical bodies, which in turn turns off these memories, which are stored in our DNA. The two twin flames, Whitney Houston and her daughter, Bobby Christina Houston, who was twins in the life before coming here, had defeated the dynasty of a certain reptilian bloodline in the underworld. I'm going to say it again. Whitney Houston and her daughter, who was twins in the past life before coming here, had defeated the dynasty of a certain reptilian bloodline in the underworld. Let's go. Science TV 111, Osaka 4, I'm back at y'all again. All right, now the subject I'm coming to talk about today is very deep. Again, this is for my third eye openness. Now, when we study in Hollywood, this is a whole new dimension, but this is the rise of Atlantis. There is a spiritual path going from Atlanta to California, from the south, which is really Atlanta, to the west. This is a south dimension connected to a west dimension. All right. Now, when you study in a lot of the celebrities such as Whitney Houston and a lot of people who's found face down inside of bathtubs and water, you are studying the threat of an energy that a lot of the people at the top can see using astrology. And they think by getting rid of them physically that they can stop the evolution of those people that's, you know, actually born with veils over their eyes. And when I say veils, I'm talking about spiritual um spiritual things that where they can tap into certain bloodlines within their dna because your dna is not just something that you can go to the hospital and have analyzed by certain doctors and things like that your dna has many dimensions in it has many bloodlines that you have been a part of ever since you have existed when i say existed i'm talking about before this third dimensional plane before this earth realm a lot of people get it misconstrued so when we're talking about Whitney Houston, for an example. This is an entity that has been connected with a certain bloodline that was in opposition to the reptilian bloodline and an underworld governmental structure. When I say an underworld governmental structure, I'm talking a military, um, a, mili a, a spiritual military um, that has been evoked by a past entity that is above and beyond this realm. Now, when I say above and beyond this realm, I'm talking about at a time where the Atlantis existed. See, the Atlantis is underground. They went underground for a while. And so now what you see going on in the West, the fires and things of that nature, this is the return of the great old ones, which is the bloodline of Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston was a part of that bloodline. And the great old ones, which also my teacher Bobby Hemmings spoke of, was in opposition to these reptilians. Now, a lot of people ask, well, why did Whitney Houston go there? Why did she sign the contract? Why did she do this? Because you have to remember that there is a baby part of all of us that is unconscious to the people who know about us. There's a baby part of us 
that lives in us that is unconscious of the people that were enemies to us in the underworld in the past life. She didn't know about this. She didn't know about this. But the part of her now that has awakened, that is actually setting these fires over there on the west coast along with some others in her bloodline, is now coming back to attack. There's a, there's a, there's a world war going on. You see, you see, we think that physical world wars is something that's threatening. No, it's not. The spiritual world war is what's threatening. This is why you're going to start seeing a lot of earthquakes, fires, um, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes. That's why Marcus Garvey said, I'm coming back in a whirlwind. He already knew. This man knew what bloodline he stemmed from. This is why he became depressed in his last days. Because he found out that it was more about physical liberation. He found out that the people that he tried to help, he couldn't figure out why they were against him, trying to turn on him, and, and being Uncle Tom's to the white man to try to get him out of the United States. But later on, it was revealed to him that every black face is not in kinship because it's just a classification. You have more of the people that physically look like you, that's the enemy to you, than any other um, physical entity. This is, how, this is how they had to trick you. It's called the wolf and sheep skin. This is how you identify them. All right? So um, another question was posed to me as well about why don't I acknowledge God? And why do certain people call the white man God? I really don't care because the word itself is not really superior to me. It's man-made. So it's not something that I would look up to because it was something that was created by man who was created by a woman. So I'd rather worship the woman than worship the God that was created in the mind of the man. It's simple. A lot of people say, well, why, do you, why don't you refer to yourself as an African? I'm going to answer that too. Because if we say that the universe is billions and billions of years old, that means that it existed before Africa. So how can I be an African? See, this race thing is the matrix. We need to get out of this. We need to get out of race. Race is a classification. This is why they're putting us against each other. You have to go, you have to judge based on the frequency in the mind of an individual. Oh, uh oh, oh, sake of four turning. No, I'm not. I'll never turn. It's just that every day I grow. And, I, and one foot is out of the matrix and one foot is in my reality. Remember that the outside of you is the third dimension. The inside of us is the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension, we ain't going there, is already inside of us. It's just that when you wake up to it every day and every second, things become more clear to you than it was yesterday. Do you get what I'm saying? So, why don't I acknowledge myself as an African? Because the, tr the very trees itself is older than human beings. So how can I say that I'm an African putting a spell on myself that's only existed for a couple thousand years, whereas I know that it existed in the spiritual realm way before I came here into this earth realm? We existed before language. We existed before language. Why would I identify myself as an African? It's trees in Africa, but we don't call the trees Africa. We the only people that like to put labels and titles on things. And the only things that need labels and titles is products. Are you a product? Go to aisle three, get an African. Go to aisle four, get a China, China man. Go to aisle five, get a Japanese. I mean, we sound ignorant. We sound foolish, and we and see the thing is, we think that these so-called so-called conscious brothers, they think that just because they leave the church, that they awake and no, you not. The church is a part of the matrix, just like classification and race is part of the matrix. You still playing that game. The people at the top know that race don't exist, but just like they created Democrats and Republicans to make you think that one um, one um, system is for you and another system is against you, they both being paid by the same. Um, paymaster. At the end of the day, the Republicans and Democrats still playing golf together. They got scripts that they go by. A lot of us don't know how can you be spiritual when you can't even see that the system is playing you on a motherfucking chessboard. They playing you on a chessboard. So no, I'm older than an African. I existed before a language. So if I existed before a language, you can't label me nothing. I'm not a product. So a lot of people say, well, I ain't black because black is a classification. 
Well, African is a classification. More is a classification. Why? Because you're classifying yourself as something that was created in the fucking matrix. Now, if your bloodline started in the matrix, then you young. To classify yourself um, under something that was created here, 